So now it's time to actually create the keyword common trigger. The way to do this is by going to the left hand menu, go towards the automation tab, then go towards the common keyword. From here, you can press the top right blue button, new common keyword. And from here, you can select any of the posts by pressing the drop down, and you will see the beginning text of each post. Now, if your post does not show up for any reason, like you have scheduled a post, then it could not show up inside of this overview. You can also go with the custom post ID. You can then go with the custom direct custom post ID. The way to find this is by going towards your Facebook page, go towards publishing tools, then you will have a whole list of all your posts on this particular page. As you can see on the left hand side, you will have your published posts, as you can see here. So for me, a post when updating the cover photo has been made and then the actual post ID that we have here. So if you schedule the post, it will end up under the schedules post tab. For me, I don't have any, but the principle is the same. You can just go towards this particular post, press it, and then you will have your post ID right here. You can just copy and paste this post ID directly inside of your UJet common trigger. And this will allow you to connect the post that has been scheduled, but not yet live on your Facebook page. And you can set up the common keyword trigger in advance. So if you need to use the custom post ID, you know where to find the actual post ID inside of your page settings. Just go to publishing tools, go towards the section that you want to grab the post from, just copy the post ID. And from here, just paste it in. For now, I will just go with this one instead because that's already set up for me. And now we come to the following column. And that is if the comment, and then we have several conditions that we can choose from. So if we press the drop down, we can have if the comment is, if the comment contains, if the comment starts with, or is the comment is anything. So the first three are specific use cases because we need to trigger upon a certain keyword with these conditions built in. If we choose the is anything, then the chatbot will just comment on any person that comments onto your post. So be sure to only do that if you have a specific use case for that. For now, because we have a specific keyword that we set up, named sale, we are going with the condition if comment is one of the following keywords. And we just go with still. Now, sometimes people mistype. It happens and we still want to serve those people, right? So we could also say sales. We could also, we can also make some kind of typo error. So we could also say something like, so if you want to account for any typos that can be made, you can do so as well. Then we come to the section public reply to the comment on the page itself. What this section does is soon as a person comments on your Facebook post, you can let the chatbot comment basically reply to that comment from that particular person. And you can set up multiple variations to basically give it a more human-like response as well. So let me set up a few quick responses and proceed from there. So if we go by these three responses, hey full name, I've just sent you a PM, please check. Great, check your PM and I have just sent you a PM with the coupon info full name. So these responses can uh, will be randomized basically because these are variations and each time the chatbot will pick one of these three to basically reply towards the commenter with. Now, if you want to have more human-like nature, you can build more variations in. But for now, for this demo, let's leave it at these three. Also, if you want to add a variables like a first name, you can do so in two ways. You can either go with two open curly brackets and select the full name variable, or you can go towards the right-hand side and then just press the icon. If we go over to the fields tab, you will have your system field full name available as well. Now that we set up the replies inside of the Facebook post itself and selected the Facebook post, now on the right hand side, we will be able to set up the replies. 
So in the previous video, we have the opt-in message created. So let's select that one. That will be the summer sale 50% off. And now we can also go with a reply with delay in. We can either send the reply directly, instantly, soon as the user comments on the Facebook page, or we can make it a little bit more human-like and just go with a certain delay. We have a delay in seconds, minutes, or hours. Or we can also do random within three minutes, five minutes, 10, 20, 30, uh, within one hour. And then you also have different variations as well. So actually, let's go with a random between one and two minutes. And now we come to even more options that are available to us because we can now determine if we are going to reply to new users. If yes, we can enable it. By default, it's already enabled. The second one is also enabled by default, reply to existing subscriber. And now we have some choices that we can make as well. We can say reply only once to each user in one post, like the user's comments, reply to replies to comments. So this means that a chatbot will reply to multiple comments of this particular user. So the initial comment, the chatbot replies. If the user replies back, the chatbot does so again as well. It's not always advisable and normally I myself also keep that off. Track if a user tags other users. Inside of UChat, you also have the ability to check for tagged users. For example, if you are running a giveaway and the user needs to tag five people inside of the Facebook post, you can check it with this condition. And then inside the chatbot, you will be able to basically send them a message as soon as they tagged the appropriate amount of people inside of that Facebook post that are not a basically not a subscriber yet, right? So that is, that is a fantastic way to grow organically. So you can choose any of these options available. I will go with like the user's comment as well, and then leave the rest off. Make sure that the status has been set to active. You can just switch between the two and then press the button save. And now you will see that this comment keyword trigger is now inside of your overview. From the left hand side, you will also be able to set them to active or disable. You can also choose a different subflow directly, or you can choose the pencil icon and you can just adjust the text to your own liking. At the bottom left corner, you will also be able to delete the comment keyword if you no longer need it. But if you basically want to pause this automation, you can just set it to inactive instead. In the next video, we're going to basically test this comment keyword trigger out and then see if everything works like it should.